Happy Easter, everyone. Whoop. A fanfare, wow. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome to this, to every person here in this space, and welcome to every person in every place. Because the event that we are celebrating today happened two, nearly two millennia ago, but to this day, what we still experience is the presence of the risen Christ in our hearts and in our lives. Today we celebrate the undoing of death and fear and everything that can stand in the way of God's movement to transform this world. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. O God of the universe, you created light that dispelled the darkness. O Christ, you dispelled the darkness of death by the light 
of your resurrection. Because, because you, you live, live O Christ, Christ, we can be the light of the world, furthering your kingdom. Amen. Please join me now in the call to worship. Jesus, you are the Lord of life, brand new, resurrected life as sure as the sunrise. You are the Lord of peace as deep as the sea. You are the Lord of glory, love, and grace, so great we cannot comprehend it. Yet you come to us and call us each by by name. name. And on On this this day that that feels feels too good to be true, We worship you you with joy joy because because you have have risen risen. and with your risen life, a new creation is possible for all. I invite us now to hum or sing softly in our masks a hymn of praise to the risen Christ. Listen now to these words from Mark's Gospel. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance to the tomb. And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, 
had already been rolled back. We all know someone like these three women, don't we? These are the people who are right there with us when trouble comes, but they're not the ones who have much to say. They get busy doing dishes, cleaning up, and they do it simply to take some of the load off of our shoulders when we are overwhelmed and hurting. Their heart is not on their sleeve. It's in their hands. And these three women were like that. Their hearts were broken, but they saw this as one last thing they could do for Jesus' mother and family. It was one last service they could do for Jesus. It was their way to put this tragedy to bed. It was their way to work through their grief on their way back to the lives they had before. In a way, they reflect something that's within all of us. It's our human tendency when our dreams are shattered to go back, to try and resume our lives as they were. Probably has something to do with the comfort of familiarity of what we're used to or what we know about and remember. But the resurrection of Jesus offers us an alternative to living in one place. His resurrection provides a way out of a business-as-usual existence. We know that Jesus used the Passover as a way to understand his passion. We know that he used the Passover as a way to talk about the new covenant And in the Jewish Passover, the Exodus story is recounted throughout the Passover meal. Talks about the slavery and the hard labor in Egypt. Talks about God's intervention with Moses and the angel passing over the homes that had the markings God told them to place on their doors. But there is another aspect to the Passover that is especially illuminating for the impact of the resurrection on our lives. In the Passover liturgy, all the ways Israel was delivered from slavery in Egypt are celebrated one after the other. And what's interesting is that the word for Egypt in Hebrew is Mitzrayim, which also means narrow places. So today, a rabbi will say, just as God is delivered Israel from the narrow place, God wants to lead each of us out of our narrow places with mercy and grace. So for us, in light of the resurrection, God wants to deliver us from our Mitzrayim, our Egypt's, our narrow places, which is anything that's holding us back from experiencing the fullness of life God intends. So we ask ourselves on Easter morning, is there anything in our lives that's keeping us backed into a corner? Is anything hindering the movement and the experience of God's Spirit in our hearts? Are there narrow places in our relationships or our circumstances that hold us back? Where do our hearts and minds need to open up just enough to let in the light? Well, people of God, the resurrection is God's way of vindicating the life Jesus gives now and forever. It proclaims the victory of love over death and every power on earth. It is God's way of vindicating the ways and truths of living Jesus taught so that it's possible for us to learn and follow them. The good news of the resurrection is that now we can truly let go of all our shortcomings and struggles 
And while we are never finished products, we can ever be moving forward out of our narrow places into real freedom, real liberation in God. Amen. I invite us now to pray together the prayer of reconciliation. Let us pray. O God, your resurrection power sets us free. You know everything that keeps us tethered. You know every trouble and sorrow that holds us back from a more fulfilled and spiritual life. We're so thankful that there's nothing we can do that can keep your love from us. So raise us to our feet to walk with you and to work for your will to be done on earth. Amen. Please join me in the assurance of God's grace. People of God, Christ's love and mercy is for all time, for all people. This is the truth that makes it possible to live life as his disciples. Thanks be to God. Amen. Listen once again to these words from Mark's Gospel. As the women entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. 
but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. You know, there's something about human nature that sometimes leads us to look for answers in the wrong places. There are so many stories we can tell about looking in the wrong places for love and peace and fulfillment and even faith. At one time or another, we all have yielded to the temptation to give our own way a try first. We've all known times when we've been so caught up in our thoughts that we can't see or hear what's right in front of us. Whatever the reason, these women didn't get what Jesus said when he told them that death would not and could not hold him. Nevertheless, at this moment, they were given the opportunity for an epiphany by that angel, even though it didn't take at first. When the angel said, he is not here, the emptiness of that tomb provided them with the opportunity to fill in the blanks. And it does the same for us today. The testimony of all the ages since then is that the resurrection can be experienced in human hearts in ways that we can't comprehend with our minds. We can't begin to count how many lives have been changed by their experience of the living Christ. An experience so profound that it's like being born all over again. We can't fathom how Jesus makes it possible for ordinary people to risk their lives out of devotion to God and to love unlovely people unconditionally and to stand against all the evil forces that bring corruption and ruin to the earth. That's true until we find ourselves experiencing it until we find ourselves experiencing it. It's all a testimony to the fact that the resurrection is a vindication of Jesus' message as well as his life. As the angel said, his resurrection happened just the way he told you. Therefore, we can have confidence that his teachings and promises are true. Forgiveness is real. There is more mercy in God than sin in us. Everlasting life is ours to experience now and then forever. We can be born anew from above. We can be connected to Christ and bear fruits of the Spirit. We can love as Christ loves us. And by that, people will know that we are his followers. These and so much more are words we can live by, by his grace. And so because Jesus' words are true, we can be liberated from any of the narrow sorrowful places we have within us. And that in turn calls us to help others to be liberated by God's message as well. The promise of the resurrection is that Christ's words will accomplish that for which they were given in the hearts and lives of all who hear them. Thanks be to God. Let us now sing a hymn together.
Now let us pray together our unison prayer of response. Let us pray. Jesus, your resurrection means there is new perspectives, new hope, and new potential for living a new way. Come to us now by name. Amen. Breathe your spirit, grace into our hearts. And give us a new lease on life with you. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God of stunning power and love, we thank you for every way that your love and mercy is with us as we move through our lives. You meet us everywhere we are and bring light to see by and a steady hand to help us through every season of our lives. We thank you for the Easter promise of endless chances to start over and to become more faithful, more alive, more gracious and giving. So help us, God, to keep searching for meaning and faith and love and justice. Set us free so that we are able to discern what is really good and life-giving and right. Help us to see how our gifts and lives can help to make a better world and how your resurrection makes all things possible. Oh God, we pray that you'll hear our prayers for all whose circumstances make it hard to live these days and hard to feel peace or joy even on this day. If we look beyond the joy of this day, we can see as you do all that is contrary to your will for this world. So hear our prayers for all the needs that exist in the world and in our country and in our own community. Hear our prayers for all who need to know that you exist and for all who long to feel your loving presence, O God. Send your spirit to each one. Send someone to each one and let their words and actions convey to them your peace and joy and love. So hear our prayers for every person we know in need, and especially this morning for Joanna Wasser, for the Bush family, for the Spengel family, for Ruth Ann Pack, for Barbara Shaitis, for Kathleen McGovern, and for Joseph Priori. Hear our prayers as we offer them to you in silence, O God. Most loving and gracious God, we pray that you'll be with each of us and all of us. We pray that you'll raise our spirits with hope and love, bless our lives with peace that is greater than our struggles, and help us to grow in the spirit of resurrection as we seek to be your people in the world. We pray all our prayers this morning in the name of Christ who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now in this time of worship, we are given an opportunity to share from the bounty that we have each received. So I invite us to, uh, to think about what we might give to God's work in the world in the offering. And I believe there's something out in the narthex uh, where you can place them. So while we give thanks to God for all that we have received, um, let us listen to the doxology together. Let us pray. O oh God, your giving, like life itself, is everlasting. In return, receive our tokens of devotion to you. Use them to bless the minds and bodies and spirits of others according to their needs. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite us now to um, uh, sing a hymn of preparation together. People of God, we gather around this table to celebrate. Our risen Lord has overcome death, and therefore nothing, nothing,
can separate us from the love of God ever, ever again. We gather around this table in thanksgiving for our risen Lord has obliterated every betrayal, every sin, and opened the way forever to everlasting life. Through Christ, we can receive a new God's mercy and grace that bids us begin again and provides the strength to do that. Have you noticed that we gather around tables, the places that symbolize our daily sustenance? And that reminds us how much we rely on God for spiritual provision each and every day. We gather around tables that symbolize our welcome at the great banquet, the coming of God's new everlasting kingdom where the saints of every time and place will be reunited at last. People of God, let us pray. O oh God, with all our hearts we give you thanks and praise for you made us and the eternal home in which through Christ we each have a place. You are the source of all that is good and beautiful and glorious. On this Easter morning we particularly praise you for coming to earth in Jesus our Lord and your Son. We give thanks this morning for Christ's life, which shows us a new way to live. We give thanks this morning for his compassion, which changes our hearts. We give thanks for his word, which challenges us and guides our ways. And this morning we stand in humble awe of his innocent suffering, his fearless dying his rising to life, breathing forgiveness and grace. And we give thanks this morning for the promise of the Spirit who teaches us his truths and empowers us in his ways. So now we come to you, O God, in Jesus your Son, in the power of the Spirit, to receive again the forgiving, the healing, the transformation that God alone can provide. Amen. So every time we gather, we remember that Jesus with his first disciples took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. In the same way, we remember he took the cup after supper. And he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, remember me. And the good news is that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we receive anew all the love, all the blessing, all the peace and grace that God can provide. So Lord, we pray that you'll send your Holy Spirit to bless this bread and cup and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the ways of the world so that we conform to the shape of him whose communion we now share. I invite you now to receive the body of Christ that promises strength for the journey. And I invite you to receive the cup which promises new life now and forever. Let us eat and drink. Let us pray.
Lord Jesus, you have brought us to your table as sisters and brothers. Lead us into the world as your friends, living and serving you for that glorious day when all the world will gather as one family of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so listen to this last verse from Mark's gospel, finishing the story. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You know, unlike the other three Gospels, Mark has this unique and disturbing ending. And there is a longer ending in our Bibles, but that was added a lot later, and it was not by Mark. He really ended it like this in eight verses. So in Mark, the women never go to tell the disciples. Jesus never tells the women to tell them, Uh, to get the disciples to meet him in Galilee. And it does beg the question, doesn't it? Why did Mark end his gospel like this? Well, it's a cliffhanger, isn't it? And what it does, I think, is it puts the ball in our court. It's so we finish the story by how we live in response to the resurrection. The first thing Mark invites us to respond to is to let go of our fears. And honestly, the resurrection puts plenty of fears in front of us. Facing death is hard enough, but what do we do with death's undoing? 
Because Jesus has risen, then everything he taught us to be and do is back on the table, isn't it? And that's scary. Suddenly we're called all over again to profess our devotion to God in a hostile and apathetic world. Because Christ is risen, we can't simply be content to be devoted to a church or our religion because now we have to follow the living God. And the source of so many fears we face come from living in this Good Friday world. And we know that world. We know that it rewards those who conform to it rather than confront it. We know that world prefers to keep the poor and needy out of sight, out of mind. We know that world uses violence and repression to keep itself in power. And then, of course, there's the fear of death itself. But people of God, Jesus' resurrection promises us that we no longer need to fear those things because the worst that can happen, death itself, has been overcome. We don't have to fear death because the depths of God's love are deeper still. Jesus' resurrection promises that there is eternal life after this life on earth. However, that isn't all that's going on here. Did you notice in the story that Jesus didn't say he was going ahead of them to heaven? He said he was going ahead of them to Galilee, to where he met most of them, to where he called them from their former lives to follow him. This means that the resurrection is also about how we live our lives now, today, as his followers, in our ordinary lives, here on earth, with him. You know, that's another side to Jesus' words that we don't often recognize. When he said in John's Gospel, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you will be also. And that is a dual promise. It is about our heavenly home for sure. It's about the places he has for us in heaven. But in addition to that, It says that he is with us always, always on this earth and that he goes before us to the places he wants us to go and do his will. The women were scared, you see, for the same reasons that we can be when we consider what we will do with, his, with this resurrected Christ who calls us to only God knows what. And yet, in the resurrection power of the risen Christ, we can receive the compassion to help the needy. That power can fill our hearts with a love that can spill out of our lives towards our neighbors. In the power of the risen Christ, we can find the inspiration to share the message of God's love and mercy with others. In that power, we can become the community of God that recommends the gospel by how we live, by how we love so differently from the world that people just sit up and take notice. In the power of the resurrection, we can know the strength to stand for the kind of justice and peace that Jesus stood for. So the ball is in our court. But thank God, so is the presence and the power of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.
So now, people of God, let us receive God's blessing together. People of God, may the peace of our faithful creator, may the peace of the wounded healer, and may the joy of the gracious spirit and the resurrection hope of our loving Savior surround and encourage us today, tonight, and forever. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen.